So welcome to our Sunday Night Live show. For those of you that don't know, I'm Ken. And and I'm Cheryl. <laughs> I got it. I got it backwards. <laughs> I messed it up. What can you say? It's been a busy week. We got home uh, this morning at 4.48 a.m. <laughs> it was a long day and lots of flights. But to start with, we already told you where we are. So to start with, let us know where you're watching from. And I know we had one person got here early and told us, so we'll check on that. Hi, Rhonda. Greetings from Lakeside, California. Yeah. Good after. Well, good afternoon to you, Rhonda. Um, oh, thank you, Rhonda. Thanks. I appreciate that. So today we're going to go over what we just did. Uh, we've had we had a really good trip. I thought we talked uh, last Sunday. We talked about some of the things in Moab. Uh, again, uh, Moab is a place I think I'd love to go back to and do a little more exploring. And and, and I'll get a a black cape, you know, like you use on a, a, a bird of prey so they don't get scared and some strong tranquilizers and I'll take sure I'll have to see some of it. <laughs> but um, it, was, it was just an amazing trip, uh, amazing countryside. Uh, you've got a lot of videos to look forward to coming. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, put them in the chat. Yep, as, as always. But to start with, we'll talk about how we got on the train. And I've got a couple of videos here to show you some of the pieces of it. And I saw some things that were new to us, so I'll share. Oh, this is first, first is how we got on the bus. Well, this, yeah, this is the bus. The bus to the train. This is the bus that the Rocky Mountaineer, Rocky Mountaineer has for picking you up at the hotels in Moab. If you're at a different hotel, then you need to get over to this hotel. And yeah. they had two. They had two hotels. One um, kind of centrally located in Moab, and one on the north end. And this one is where you. Um, we needed to take our luggage, so we came to this one. Um, I will mute the sound so we don't have to listen to it. But this was the first time I've ever seen a bus with a lift like this. And I, I thought it was quite interesting. They made it really easy for Cheryl to get up and on. And, and the, one of the other things that was kind of cool about it is it didn't really disrupt other people from getting on the bus, other than if they wanted to sit right in the area that Cheryl was, was, was moving on. Yeah, this is fairly far back, but they didn't let anyone else on until they got me on because the driver had to go up to the top and adjust it. Uh, to get my seat in the right spot. Okay, and so now we'll see her get off the bus. Um, oh, hold on a second. Let me share the screen again. We get to take it to the beginning. Yeah, well. Hmm. Share screen. Okay, so this was the getting off the bus, and again, it um, it was just really nice and straightforward. Uh, driver helped her a little bit to make sure she got on it right. Nice safety strap in the front of it. I suggested she should just go take a running leap and see how far she could go, but she didn't <laughs> like my idea. I don't, I didn't. Oops, sorry. Um. But uh, the bus worked really well. Where we get off out here actually is it's kind of interesting because the boarding uh, location is out in the in the middle of the desert. It's a siding. They don't actually go all the way into Moab. It's about you know four or five miles out, but they have the bus here, and uh, that worked really really well. I thought. And then I've got. I'll show you the... the... The bus was very comfortable. They, I think there was... I don't know how many more spots they could put for wheelchairs at one time. There may only be one spot there. It was um, pretty tight. Yeah. Um, so I'm, again. I'm not sure if they can move more um, seats or not. Yeah, she was the only one that was using a wheelchair this trip, so we don't know about more than that. And then here, here you're going to see her get on the train. And what they did was they had her transfer to an aisle chair. Um, 
This armchair is a little bit bigger than the ones on the airplanes. I will say that. It's, it looks a little bit bigger. It's very lightweight, but it's strong. And so they'll just um, they'll crank, crank her up. It, it's, uh, up. And this is very similar to how they took her off of the uh, train in, uh, well, this is how they took her off the train in Glenwood City in Denver, and also how she got off the uh, Alaskan Railway in Seward. So this was not her first rodeo with this, but it works really well. They could have left her on the wheel, but I, I think they just felt more comfortable with her on this. And this is also a lot lighter. I'm just thinking the wheel is about a hundred, uh, yeah. three pounds heavier than that seat was. <laughs> well, that too. And, and so maybe it saves a lot of wear and tear on the poor guy cranking it up. Yeah. If I was on the wheel, I wouldn't have to have anybody ride with me, though. So that would make a difference. But they wanted to. Anyway, so this shows how it works. Yeah. So and they would take her on and she would just transfer to. Um, and I'm going to get some pictures here. Okay. So what are we talking about now? Well, I was going to show. Um, oh, here's the. Yeah, let's show the accessibility. So let's see, pull up that picture, that, those bottom two ones there. Okay. And then go to um, share screen. Yeah. Click on, on. click on the picture. Oh, okay. Looks different today. Yeah. So this is where um, Cheryl's uh, wheel road. It was in the car right next to us. But if she had needed to, or for somebody that needed to stay in uh, their mobility device, they could have just turned it 90 degrees and you could have ridden in it or just backed it up away from the wall, and there would have been, actually, let's say turn it 180 degrees, and you've been uh, riding very comfortably in your own wheelchair. Uh, again, for Cheryl, it was easier and probably more comfortable because their seats did recline a little bit, and so there was some nice things about it. Okay, and then this is what the, um, right, this one, you wanted to share this one? Right? Yeah, I was going to show you something. But... Oh, okay. Well... Now I don't know how to do it. Well, how come it all looks different? Share. This one? Go to present. Okay. Oh, there we go. Share screen. There we go. Okay. And so this is an example of the, the lounge car. Uh, and I don't think I didn't find my pictures yet of our car, but this is the pictures of the lounge car. And you can see, again, very accessible. There's a bar at the end I'm standing in. The, the doors are plenty wide to move a wheelchair through all of them. Uh, it the accessibility on board was just we thought was really good. Yeah, so the lounge the lounge car is just for getting up, moving, getting out of your regular seat, um, just you know maybe visiting with other people. Um, the regular seats there's two on each side in the regular car where you sit the rest of the time. So we have Pam. Uh, yeah, Pam likes to lift. Sorry, we were behind on the comments. Okay, so. I can do this. Um, okay. Rhonda had a bus like that in Juno. Oh, that was cool. So Pam said hello. And then um oh, oh. they wouldn't allow you to stay on the scooter. They allowed you you stayed on your scooter, right? On the in the bus I stayed on my well, it's a wheelchair, electric wheelchair. Yeah. It doesn't take up quite as much room. It was a little tight in there. I think for a scooter, it would have been hard to turn around in there in a scooter. I don't I don't think it would have worked. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Catching up on our notes. Oh, Rhonda said she could not see the video, but we got it going after a minute, I think. Let's see. Oh, still no video. I don't know which video they didn't see. Okay. Hello, Pam. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. Oh, now, Mike, just... the next question is, is, did you not see any of the, vi any of the videos? <laughs> okay. So. I'll try it again, I guess. I'm going to try again. I'm going to stop sharing. On the train only. Okay. So let me, let's try this. So the bus. The bus video, I guess, huh? Okay, so we're going to try the bus video again. Just give me a second here and we will. That's me coming off the bus. Oh, you maybe scroll up. I don't know where the other one is. No, no. Okay, I want to just rerun this bus video. You have to see. present, right? Technology. I don't know if anything changed today. <laughs> okay. So let me see. Can you see? You should be able to see the 
this uh, getting off of the bus video, but let's we'll let it play here. Let me know in the comments real quick if you can see the the video, because I see it on the shared screen, but I doesn't mean you can see it. Anyway, that, Anyway, uh, so here's the here's the bus video. Hopefully, this time you can see it coming down. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. So Marvin can see it. All right. So anyway, she's gonna come down, and get off. We'll watch just a piece of it. It's pretty straightforward. The getting on was just the reverse of it. Yeah. So this is the bus instead of the train, and it was very nice. You see, they took out two seats, and that gave me room to go in and turn the electric wheel around, and then sit forward like in the same direction everyone else was. Okay, so I'm going to start, stop sharing. And let me go back to see where I am banner-wise. Mm -hmm. So we got on the train. So let's talk a little bit about accessibility on the train. Um, what did you think, Cheryl, for getting around? Mm -hmm. Now, well, she was uh, navigating, kind of holding on to seats and things so that she didn't have to use her chair or get the aisle chair. They had the aisle chair on board if she needed it. Yeah, I'm, and I'm not sure. It's I think that the train opening was very narrow, although the wheel was able to fit through it. I'm yeah. thinking that a wide wheelchair you would have to get off. Yeah. To get through the train, but I it was it was fine. I really enjoyed the train a lot. Um, the bathrooms were um, fine. I mean they're they're about twice as big as a airplane bathroom, which makes a lot of difference. Mm -hmm. I didn't use the fully accessible one, which Ken got pictures of. I used the, the regular one, but it was still, um, it was fine. Um, and it was, very, uh, this, uh, this is a first class experience. I mean, it, it was extremely clean. There was no, I never had a qualm about using the restrooms on the train. And um, it was, I mean, it's probably the cleanest travel bathroom I've ever seen. And it stayed that way the whole trip. And that was nice. There was always everything you wanted in there, everything you needed in there. There's an emergency button in there if you push it by mistake. And it's interesting, it was kind of down by the floor, which is good because if you fall, you can reach it. But um, it was down by the floor. And if you just push it a second time, like it turns red when you push it, you can see it there down. No, I think, yeah, under Ken's leg there. I right think there. That's the button. And but it, the whole thing will light up red if you push it, and then if you push it by mistake, just hit it real quick a second time, and they won't come bothering you while you're in there. Yeah, there's um, space to get up to the sink. Again, uh, it's not super plush as far as space, but at yes. least you've got uh, all of the things you need to get up and down and around. It's and nice think, thing is the rails. I think they had some kind of automatic deodorizer that had no scent, unscented, but. Every time you flushed, you hear all these little spray things afterwards, like a little air. Anyway, all I know is that it, it always looked and appeared that no one had ever been in there, no matter how many times people have been in and out. <laughs> so it was, I want, I want one of those for my, for my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she wants her house to have a bathroom that stays clean like that. Um, so, you know, I, Cheryl didn't go back to the dining car, but it would have been either in the wheelchair. I was going to need that again in just a second. Okay. Well, I didn't want to talk show toilets while we're talking about food. We weren't showing the toilet. <laughs> oh well, it was. Yes, it was. I just changed it. <laughs> what were you showing? Nothing. I had oh. the screen up. No, it just popped up. No. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I couldn't tell. Okay. This is what I saw. <laughs> um. Anyway, <laughs> the technology. Let me check the chat. Um. I, I, I never, it was never any challenge to move around. There's a pretty good space between the doors, the uh, between the cars where you can walk through going straight back. There was also narrow spaces on uh, each side, on each car on both sides so that there were like four little um, cubby holes, so to speak, that you could get in and lean and, and they were open so that you could look out and take video. So I'll have some video. I don't have any in this uh, for, for today, but, You'll start to see a bunch of them show up uh, both as shorts and as uh, some longer form videos with me looking out the uh, the windows so that I didn't have to deal with the glass and views of the train curving around and going in tunnels and out of town tunnels and seeing the rivers and 
it was just an incredible trip. You know, the, the scenery, it changed. It was very different. The difference between where we started and where we got off was huge. Uh, where we started and where we spent the night was huge because what you have is uh, you're in the desert with these big red rock canyons and a big muddy Colorado River there. By the time we moved away from the, the Colorado, what we had was a clear uh, mountain stream. And then we followed another uh, fork, that another river that would feed into it as we moved on up toward uh, Winter Park and into Denver. We agreed and disagreed on that. I never thought any of it looked like a clear mountain stream, but it was definitely clearer than it was down at the bottom. Yeah. It always looked orange and muddy to me, but just getting clearer as you go to the top. I think you'd have to go up it, into the mountains where the parks are or the walks. And it's actually it was clear enough. Clear I'd have loved to go trout fishing at all. Is yeah, all well, I can yeah, say. Okay, yeah, clear enough for trout fishing. Okay. Took all right. Anyway, there was some more notes. Okay, on the zine, the question about would the zine fit in the train aisle? The zine is the walker um, wheelchair combo thing that... Um, Ron and I both use. Um, the zine is a little bit wider. I don't think that it, I really doubt that it would go through from one car to the other, but it might. I guess we can um, try I'll, to find We'll out find you an answer. We'll get a measurement on that. But I know that if you wanted to sit in your zine, that you could fold it and get it up in there. And then in that space where the um, where my scooter was stored, it would probably fit there just fine. And it is nice because if you're tall, you, it's higher than the seats are. And if you're used to it, um, you know, it's got its I advantages. Think, I think it would work in the lounge car. I think that aisle was plenty wide, but I'd, well, I, I will get, I'll, I'll get the measurements on that. And then I'll email my contact at uh, Rocky Mountaineer and we'll find the answer for you, Rhonda, on that. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, thanks for the question. The seats were very comfortable, and we um, right now, if you want to, if you want to have an opportunity to get on the train and almost sit where almost anywhere you want, I think there's two there's two classes: the silver and the silver plus. And we were in the silver plus, and right now um, the silver plus was maybe a third full, so um, we actually moved up to the front two seats, which were empty, and they had a lot more room. <laughs> And then we, uh, I guess we were a little bit piggy about it because we kind of ended up taking both sides because I would go over and squirm around and sit and, and then whatever was showing on one side or the other, we would run over and get video on the different sides. But so if you want to be able to do that easily, I'd say book it right away before it gets really popular because there's some room. It's, you just really get fantastic service when they're not packed full. And you get fantastic service anyway, but when it's not full, then they really, um, we had just a lot of time for talking with the people that were and plenty of time for questions. And, you know, they explain what you're seeing. They tell interesting stories throughout the, uh, the whole trip on and off. And so um, made it very interesting and with plenty of room to walk around and move and visit with people. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, we had a, t because we were in the front of the, of the car, uh, we didn't have a drop down table from the seat ahead of us. We so we had a table, and, and I just clamped my uh, 360 camera to the table. And so what happened was, is I have uh, well almost a terabyte or a little over a terabyte of video from that trip. Now it won't be perfect for all of the trip, but I have a I'll have a lot of video to choose from to show what was going on on both sides, and you know, and good views up. Uh, the it was just incredible. You saw a cheesecake. Oh. <laughs> yeah. We will share. Well, the food was fantastic. Yeah, we were going to talk about the food. That was the next thing we were going to talk about. Um, so let's go to that banner. So the food on board was really like, a, it was a five-star restaurant food. I, I told the, the chef on board, I told her, you know what? On the cruise ships, when they bring out like the officers and all the main people on, and they introduce you, you know, one evening during the cruise, it's like the chef's get like standing ovations, you know, and that's about the way her food was. It was very, very good. It was locally sourced, which I thought was very interesting. And it was very interesting food. It was a little different. It was something different. And um, each, I, I just love the menus. I posted about how good they were. But yeah. Was, and we'll share that. We will share the menu for you. Yeah. And we've got some pictures we can share here about it. Click it, double click it. But it's not sharing until I go down here. And I go click the picture. Oh. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm getting it. Okay. Yeah. So here's one of our meals. This was um, braised short ribs, I believe. Yeah. And and then you'll notice the broccoli and the carrots are nice and crisp. You just cook right there. And that was uh, chicken, and I, I got a little close with the camera. Sorry. I think it was chicken with a citrus sauce. Um, it was excellent. It was excellent. And then um, one day, this was our dessert, a flourless chocolate cake. Excellent, with a little orange slice on it. Um, and we'll, oh. we'll, have, we'll, have a, we'll have a video about all of the food. And what, it was interesting because you had a choice of two entrees every meal. There was a, a, always a salad to get started. Then you had a choice of two entrees. And so what Cheryl and I did is we, we shared the entrees just so we could both taste them. And then uh, there was typically just one dessert. They had wines that paired with your meal or with dessert. Uh, they had everything from sweet wines to Merlots and calves. Okay. And we tried, to, we, we, we tried to Riesling the first day and it was so good. But the next day we decided to, for the meats, for the chicken and the, and the short rib, we decided to pair them with what they suggested, and it went very well. They had a red and a white, and they were very nice. Yeah, but I'm, I'm a big fan of Riesling, so <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it was interesting too. I, I would say this because the you have an, an open bar, you know, they, and they'll bring you drinks to your seat, you know, from the time you get on board till the time you get off. And, and some people seem to like the bars a lot, but. We had a drink or two. Mostly we had wine with dinner and it, we enjoyed it. it there was, was no, um, I don't want to say this. There was no need to drink nonstop because there was so much to look at. It was so beautiful. Uh, we just really loved uh, what we see. Yeah, and then um, on the second day, when you go to the hotel, they, they, they let you know that the second day will be like a light snack. And then, so they suggested that you be sure to eat a good a good breakfast because right. it would be like a little snack before they come along with a meal. But the little snack, it was a um, it was what they called a tamale, like a tamale pie, which was um, anyway. We'll have to tell you about that later. We have the menus and all that, and it was actually more filling than I think they thought it was going to be. But I was glad we had a good breakfast. There's a lot of nice little restaurants in town that offer breakfasts. And we, we enjoyed where we went, and we enjoyed the town immensely of Glenwood Springs. We really enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, again, one of those places that we have to go back to. But this was uh, probably in the midpoint of our journey. Uh, the, we'd widened out into a pretty wide canyon with some housing and stuff around. Uh, this was up in the Glenwood Park. Or no, not Glenwood Park. Um, Winter Park. Winter Park. Uh, the ski area right above Denver. We went through there, and, and right before we went into the Moffat Tunnel. The Winter Park is really, really growing, um, and so is Denver, and they're still beautiful, though. I was I was surprised at how beautiful Denver was. I really was. I really enjoyed yeah. it. Um, but the, it, all in all, I, it's, it's a trip I would – oh, that, there's one I wanted to show. I'm going to share one more of it. Because here was, this was a clip. We're just kind of starting out. Is it showing? Oh, no. I'm sorry. Okay. And here we were. Uh, we had just, I think this is where we had just joined back up with the river. About the first 15 miles, you're not right on the Colorado River. And then the rest of the way until the... Fraser River splits off, then we follow the Fraser River up to uh, Winter Park. Now, this is what people who are afraid of heights see when they're in Moab. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is how Moab looks from ground level. It's beautiful, actually. And then um, and you can go up to um, one of the parks there, the... Um, Arches. Arches. I mean, no, no, the other one. Canyonlands. Canyonlands. You can go into Canyonlands without really getting afraid of the heights. And you can go to their first overlook. After that, if you're afraid of heights, you probably ought to write it off. But um, it's it's actually very pretty. And on the way up to Canyonlands, up to that first view, there was uh, flat. It had rained recently, and there were flowers in bloom, and it was really yeah. a beautiful desert scene. Even on the way up to Canyonlands, there was a lot of of, of lookouts on the uh, way. Yes, you could you could spend a whole day going to the 
look out and looking out of the canyon land looks out through, you know it's not like you have nothing to do all day but the most spectacular scenes are past that point yeah. which i missed but that's okay <laughs> yeah because there's one little place it's called the neck and, and it's really accurately described as a neck because it's basically it slopes away pretty steeply on both sides of it it's not very long but it was way too long for cheryl and so we turned around and went back but it was um I guess if I had known, if I had seen some videos of how long that was going to last, that might have helped me. Then I might have said, okay, I, I just have to hold on for two minutes or whatever. But it just seemed like it was never going to end. <laughs> okay. So, um, all right. So, in Glenwood Springs, we had a really nice hotel. We stayed at the Hotel Denver, which was across the street from the train station. We had a little short elevator ride to go from the track level up to the to the street level, go across the street. Uh, we had a really nice accessible room. The you know, yeah. uh, property was really nice. And, and Glenwood nice. was really, I would say, pretty accessible. It had a really nice um, bridge that went across the river. Cheryl went over and saw a big hot springs. So she thought it was an Olympic-sized pool and found out it was a hot spring. Yeah, Olympics. Olympic-sized hot springs. I'm like, oh, I need to stay there a few days. And I told the trainer, they really need to make a way for you to stay there a few days. They don't have a way for that. And I think that would be fantastic. But um, I loved it. I, I went across the river. On the, It's a very wide walk over. Even if you're afraid of heights, uh, you wouldn't. You can go down the middle and not even look to the side. It's, it's fine because the mountains are on each side of you. You don't feel like you're up high. But you can just, it was easy to get across and see both sides. Now, the other hotel that they use, they use the Hotel Denver. Hotel and, Coronado, wasn't it? Um, I don't remember. The Colorado. Colorado. I mean, maybe the Colorado. They have another hotel they use that Rocky Mountaineer uses. And it's right across the river. I mean, you can see both hotels from the train. But you cross the bridge to get to the other one. It's from like the 1800s. It was very interesting. The keys for that one are, were, were interesting. But anyway, um, yeah, there it, were actually really keys that went into a lock and you twisted it. Yeah. And Almost had, needed instructions. Yeah. <laughs> and also they said that I guess because it's an older building, it takes a long time for the hot water to get to those rooms. And the Hotel Denver, our hot water came up right away. But um, the Hotel Denver had a lot of room. I mean, the, the, the lobby was um, for an older place, uh, for older, it was, it was a smaller hotel, but the lobby was very spacious. And then you get in there and you see this kind of little restaurant raised level. But if you go around to the right, I found my way around. There was a way to get up to that restaurant with a ramp and behind all of the sign-in desk and all that stuff. And then there's a little shopping area off to the right in, in the hotel. And there's a coffee shop right in the hotel on the first level. Um, and then there's a bar next to it. And you can get to that bar by going just going outside and they have a ramp into the bar. Most of the places there had ramps. The streets had the kind of curbs where some places where there just was like no curb. It was just a slanted area for quite a distance, not always just cutouts on the corner. Um, so that was good. And to get up to the bridge, there was there were two elevators there to go up to the bridge and come back down to get. Now, the only thing was, and they didn't, when we got there, I didn't really, they had a little tiny elevator, a little tiny elevator in the train station. The train station is very cute, by the way. It's older, but it's remodeled. It's beautiful. And, you know, if you want to see some old architecture that's still um, beautifully in use, that's the train station there. And we get into the train station, they have a big room there. You go in and they said, this is where the women used to wait for the train. Because a long time ago, when that building was built, men would all be smoking cigars and they would be off in a different room. And then there was steps in the middle between those two rooms, the steps go up to the street. And so they built a little tiny elevator, <clears throat> which fits four people packed in tightly. And so like with my, with my wheel and Ken, and then one of the train personnel rode up with us in that elevator. And I was so proud of myself, <laughs> not crying about that elevator. And I got up to, and I got out and into the street. But then later I realized, I, because I, I said, can't you go to that, like the bridge, the bridge elevator does not come down all the way to the train level. But I do believe if you're really terrified of little elevators, you could go all the way past the train and about like another 200 feet under the bridge and come up around on the street. And I think you could come up the street to get up. And but on the way out, I just told Ken, you take the wheel down. I'm, I'm taking the steps. <laughs> and I took this out. In the morning, I just was too clear how to do like um, mm -hmm. To get back in that little elevator. I, I, I forgot that she needed like three mimosas for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just uh 
just so you're warned, but I do believe there is a way to go if you go all the way down. And they won't tell you, they go, no, 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 use this elevator. And like they're always trying to help you, but they don't realize you have more than one problem. <laughs> yeah. But um, so anyway, it was, I, I loved the trip. Uh, the the rides, the, the rides were a little shorter every day. I want to say probably, we probably averaged five or six hours on the train. And by the time you do that with two meals, uh, you know, the day goes by really quickly. Uh, they at some point in time they may make it a little bit longer. They're looking at expanding maybe beyond the Moab just because Moab's a little bit hard to get into. Uh, again, we talked about it last week, but I would fly to Denver and then fly around trip, fly into Moab from uh, you know on Southwest or something so that you could get in. There's not a lot of lift capacity, which is a problem for the Rocky Mountaineer because when they're full, they they can take about I think they said 250 passengers. So there's not enough airlift capacity for 250 people coming in on one day to get on the train plus, you know, the regular traffic for uh, Moab. And we don't know how the we don't know how the transfers from the train and the plane to the hotels work if they use that same coach. If they use the same coach, then they can at least get one wheelchair lifted at a time. Yeah. And I'm sure they can tell you all of that. Yeah, I was saying uh, the the bus in in Moab was really the accessible bus oh, that worked yes. really well for us. We used it a lot. It just started this summer, so if you have friends from there, they go, "What bus are you talking about?" This um, they just started with. A, it's got a lift on the back, and it works beautifully. It's brand new. It's very comfortable, and it's free. And you just call them, and it took them about. They always, it always said like thirty to forty minutes. It was usually about 20, 25 minutes before they came. It was real quick, and we were on the north edge of town, so that was really good. Yeah. If you were in town, probably they could pick up in ten minutes. Now, as more people hear about it. It, it may take a little bit longer to get the ride, but um, it's and very nice and it runs all day. I mean, not 24, but 9 a.m. Um, to 9 p.m. Yeah. So, and it works, you know, it's almost like having an accessible cab that's free, except that it's shared ride, uh, but it worked really well for us. We were very happy with it. And it was much better than trying to find an accessible taxi in Denver because the folks at Rocky Mountaineer, and I have to can't say enough good things about them because. They did everything they could to get us an accessible cab to pick us up where we got off the train in Denver. And they called and they, you know, and they had somebody that said they would come and they didn't show up. So what they did is uh, we uh, put Cheryl in their van and loaded the wheelchair in the van and, and they took us to our hotel. Uh, and, you know, and you can't add, that was something that was completely unexpected. It wasn't any commitment they made. But they did it to make sure that we got where we needed to go. And you get in, it was about 8.30 at night, I think. Yeah. And so I think they were worried about leaving us. Um, I mean, I, I could see some... Hi. Hope everybody's still here. Yeah, I, I know what happened. All here. of a sudden, it went blank. But it's not doing the same thing it was doing. There's Marvin. Oh, Marvin, love the parks there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, your wife and I, we get along fine. Then fine. Yes, the parks are beautiful in Moab, definitely. And and there are, and I have videos coming on the accessible trails in the parks because the viewing areas have, uh, in um, in Canyonlands have accessible. Uh, ramps that lead right up to to the edge with a barrier so that you can look over the edge and not feel like you're going to roll off. The um, in arches there were trails that were wheelchair accessible. Now they're not paved, but it's just a firm packed gravel. In fact, I'm working on editing uh, one of the first ones. There are also trails that if you're 70 years old and a little bit fluffy, that you should think about reading the sign. It tells you how far and how long and how high before you go start that trail. Uh, again, you'll see video. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll speed it up. It was a long trip up, uh, but I was sure huffing and puffing at the end of it. Anyway, so uh, any questions about that? We have a comment okay. over there. Oh, just a real quick thing about Glenwood Springs again was Glenwood Springs, you're only there for an evening. You get in about 8 o'clock. You leave in the morning about Oh, we left late for some reason. Usually leaves earlier. We left a couple hours late. But um, 
the accessibility there. I mean, it's, it's a small town from what I could see. If you're just there for the hours we were, you can get around real easily. So um, you don't really need anything special there for that. Yeah, it's 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 a very much a small town, like a small ski town. Um, it's just, you know, it, it, again, it was just a very cool little town. Uh, and people were, I thought, were really nice and friendly. Um, so next week, where are we going, Cheryl? Actually, we're, okay. a week from today, where will we be? We from show today, time? we're going to be going, well, we're getting getting ready to get on the train. I do, you told oh. me the days changed, so I'm not sure what we're doing next week. This time next week, our live show will be from the Miami station of the Bright Line. Okay. We'll have a representative from the Bright Line will be on with us live in person. We don't get to do in person very often. And we should also have somebody from the Miami Convention and Visitors Bureau on. Uh, but we will have by then have filmed the the, the station in West Palm Beach. We've writ, we'll have ridden the Bright Line, and we will have filmed the the station in Miami. So we're looking forward to that. I, I'm going to start publicizing, and I'll I'll send out some topics here fairly quickly. I just need to uh, talk to um, the Bright Line and make sure I know uh, where we are on everything. But uh, that's the plan, is to be live from the Brightline station in Miami. And on Monday morning, a week from tomorrow, we will be getting on an airplane and flying to the Dominican Republic. We are visiting four all-inclusive resorts in 10 days. Cheryl's favorite thing is to move every couple of days. Not. Okay. So that's, <laughs> I got that's a dirty look. Out. Oh, but then also, but we didn't really talk about Denver very much. Real quick. Oh. We were going to do this before we get on another topic next time. We stayed at the Gaylord uh, Resorts, which is amazing, amazing, amazing. Huge hotel, huge uh, convention centers. They had like four conventions going on at the same time. It was never crowded. Um, extremely accessible. Um, I'm sure you'll... Um, see more about that later on our things but um if if you wanted to have a convention about accessibility and have a lot of people with challenges that would be the place to have it i mean it's the, the hallways are like 20 i mean the convention hallways are about 20 feet wide the everything was just wonderfully accessible they're very helpful they even have about 15 wheelchairs there so you don't but I would still recommend to bring your own because they said even with that many, they run out. It's first come, first serve. They will not reserve them. So um, that was kind of interesting. They have a ramp into the outside pool. Right now, the inside pool is being renovated. And so it has a lift, but that's not it's not a portable lift. And maybe the new one will have portable lifts. The old one did not. So they don't have a lift for the outside pool right now. But it's a beautiful place to go, a beautiful place to stay. The food was great, um, and you just—you couldn't say more about the accessibility there. Everyone was very helpful. And when I had to get into my room, I didn't have. There's no push button on the doors, but we were in a standard room. The standard rooms have railings around the toilet. They have railings in the tub, so um, that was perfect. We had a tub and a standard room, so it did. But it did have the doorbell. It was partially accessible because it had the doorbell alarms and stuff yeah. for the heart. We'd call hearing. it ambulatory accessible because it did have a tub. Yeah, that's what we call it. But um, so, but they said that they have the fully accessible rooms are the roll-in shower type. The fully accessible rooms have beds that rise and and go, you know, raise up and They're go electric down. Electric beds. beds, which is amazing. I thought, um, and. They're very, very helpful with, um, they said, if you if you have site challenges or whatever, they will orient you to the surroundings, to the area, to the hotel, to your room. Um, they're, they're ready for you if you have challenges. So I thought that was very nice. And I think there's five of them in the, in the United States. So we might have to go try some more of those. <laughs> yeah, but we did enjoy the Gaylord a lot. And I was going to go back to, I said, we didn't get the accessible cab in, in Denver. And so Rocky Mountaineer took us to the hotel. The rest of the trip, uh, what we found was is Denver's public transportation is really pretty good. We, the buses are fully accessible. Uh, so we uh, took a bus uh, to the train station. There's a train station that got pretty close to the Gaylord. Now the Gaylord doesn't, the, the, that's, and this is, surprises me given the way everything else was accessible. The Gaylord doesn't have an accessible shuttle, but they do have a shuttle uh, that will, can pick you up at the, the nearest um, metro station. I don't, uh, I don't remember what they call it. It's not really Metro. But anyway, their their version of, of light rail. 
uh, they would pick us up and and we were able to lift Cheryl's C2 and put it in the back of the bus and Cheryl could navigate the few but, steps. But if, you, if, but if your scooter's fully charged, you could make it to the hotel easily. I think it's only about a mile point, 1.8 miles to this where they yeah. picked us up. So that would be the other option. Just go if the weather's good and everything you need is fine. Just roll yourself over there. Um, it was, and they're building all around. The Gaylord used to be out in the middle of nowhere, and they are just building all around it, all around it. So that was, I, I, I guess, in a way, it's a shame, but I guess it just makes more people aware of it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, all in all, we had a really nice trip. Um, again, we love the Rocky Mountaineer. We got some comments. We've been chatting for a while, so we will... Uh, Okay, so Pam says, oh, she wants to see that. I'm not sure what she wanted to see. Maybe the Gaylord, but I'm not sure. Let's see. And then um, I'll move it, move it, move it. Oh, I'm not <laughs> sure. Okay, <laughs> we, we should have showed them when they were, came up. Okay, oh, the halls are carpeted. Um, yes, at the Gaylord, the hall, halls are carpeted, but not like the... The restaurants were not carpeted. The 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 entryway was not the lobby. Um, it was only carpeted I think in the halls, in the hallways, like near the convention center. But with a scooter, it was okay. And um, but, and then the up Zinger, in the rooms, in the rooms, it was also carpeted. I don't know. We were in a standard room at the far far end of the hallway. I mean, we went around and around and around to get to our room. But with my scooter, it was didn't wasn't a problem, and I'm not sure where the fully accessible rooms are. If you could ask for one close to the elevators, that would help. Let's see. Oh, hotel carpeting, yes. And this hotel carpeting was extremely thin, extremely. But it thin. still had pad under the the carpeting is not the problem as as much as the pad because the pad is what makes it so uh, where it soaks in so bad. Oh, oh, the train terminal. Yes, yeah. Wanna, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, the train terminal coming up to see you. All the train, the Brightline station in Miami is just. It's, I mean, in Orlando. In Orlando, yeah, in Orlando is. Oh, it's wonderful. It's just like a. It's like a spotlessly clean airport. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we will um, we will be live from next week live from the Miami um, Brightline station. The following week, we should be live, assuming the connectivity is ex acceptable. We will be live from the Dominican Republic. And then we will, the following Sunday, we'll be back home again. I am going to, uh, I'll post in the Facebook group uh, some information about the upcoming trips because we have, we have quite a few because we've got, um, our first trip is MSC, then we have Canard, then we have Cele Celebrity, then we have NCL, then we have Holland America. Holland America. Yeah, so see the MSC Seaside, we're doing that in mid August. If you be, and that's just a short one, but if you want to make it worth your trouble, it's going to be, it turns, it goes round trip to Orlando in like three days, but then it goes out for seven days and comes back. So if you want to make a 10 day trip of it, it'd be great. Great way to see um, uh, part of Mexico as well. Then the one for Cunard, Cunard, we're going to be taking to New England and Canada. So, um, and then, and then um, I forget what we're doing with um, NCL. NCL is just a oh, short new, trip. Oh, the short one, yes. yeah. Short trip on the Viva, which is a brand new no, ship. Ascent. That's Good. NCL is the Viva. We did the Viva last year. No, we did Prima. Oh, Prima. Oh, the it's Viva. A can be, okay. Celebrity Ascent, <laughs> which is a brand new celebrity ship, is a short trip. So we're doing that. Then we're doing right after that. We're doing the the um, the Viva in fairly close order. I don't remember what the space is, the time frame. And then, like I said, we, and we have September to Alaska. So we have we have a bunch of things going. I'm going to set up a page on the my our website, but and I'll post the link to that, and we'll talk about it. Oh, Hopefully, okay. I'll have it done by next week. All in America in January to Hawaii. Yeah. So that's very exciting. And then oh, and I'm looking to put together a group to go in um, May to Greenland for, um, I think it's a 14, 14 day trip. I believe it's a two week trip. It goes to Canada and Greenland. Oh, that's a and, carnival. And Oh, carnival. And the great thing about it is that it's, um, it's from Maryland, which for us will be, you know, not, not too hard of a flight for me. So I'm hoping a bunch, a bunch of my friends and, and some, maybe some of our viewers will join us for that. It's, I think you, you spend two days in Greenland, three in Canada, and the rest 
is just on the ship, just having fun on the ship. So, yeah. <laughs> so you know, we will have a lot of things coming up uh, where we'll be going. And for those of you that have your own travel agent, if you're on the ship with us, we'll be glad to see you. Uh, it's not one of those things you have to book with us for us to talk to you. Anybody that's part of our our family of people that uh, share uh, common challenges, we're always glad to see you, no matter where it is. So, so yeah, Pam, if you're close enough, yeah, we'll be happy. <laughs> we'll have lunch together uh, somewhere. Yeah, we'll give you a, we'll give you a schedule for that. We'll post the schedule up on the website. Okay. okay we'll yep. more of it. Yeah, we're going to be seeing lots of ships in the next year. Oh, yeah, no, that's I've, I've, I've been to Hawaii twice because we lived in Japan for a while and we would stop there. But um, I just I, I can't really fly that far anymore. So this is my one way to get there. So I'm really hoping nothing nothing changes for us for this. <laughs> yeah, I think it's paid for. So, you know, unless, yeah, unless something, something breaks happens. us bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 We'll, we'll, we'll all be in Hawaii one of these days together. So, anyway, we'll, we'll let everybody go. Thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure to be with with you guys. I wish it was two ways so we could see you. I'm sure you get tired of looking at our uglies. But anyway, or my ugly, I have a beautiful wife. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but um, thanks for watching. We'll see everybody next week. Different place, though. Bye. Bye. <laughs>